Welcome to Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 22nd of June with me, Patrick Munley. It appears that the markets are trying to come to terms with the daily swings in the new US uh, coronavirus cases, although the increase in total daily cases is now above 25,000 mark. This does give some cause for concern and we did see some uh, late weakness in the equity markets on Friday. Uh, looking ahead, the market will be paying attention to a couple of key themes. One, news on US relations with China and any news about a fourth US stimulus package will also be uh, closely watched. And uh, this is expected to, to be announced before unemployment benefits end in late July. On the US data side this week, it seems that there is a slight slowing in the improvement in the employment situation. Thus, Thursday's initial and continued claims will be closely scrutinized. We'll also see May existing home sales, May durable goods orders, and final reading of June consumer sentiment. We'll also hear from the Federal Reserve's Charles Evans and James Bullard. Expect them to echo FOMC Chair Powell's view that the recovery will be a hard-fought battle. Note, however, that the financial system seems healthier. Drawings on the Fed US dollar swap lines have dropped to 280 billion from 445 billion over the past couple of weeks. From a technical perspective, uh, the dollar index has staged a recovery from the uh, symmetry swing objective at the 96 level. And we're now just coming into the first level of resistance here with Friday's close up towards this 97.70 area, which is symmetry swing resistance uh, versus the last corrective phase in the dollar. Looking early in the week to see if we get a key reversal uh, Monday, Tuesday, which then could set the tone for the next leg lower, certainly to retest prior lows at 95.70, ultimately en route to the 9460 objective. However, if we don't get that early reversal, then I'd be looking for a move uh, higher to extend up into the next resistance area, which is the equality objective versus this structure at the 9820. And then we also have some sending trend line resistance at 9870. So again, watching for bearish reversal patterns in this zone to set short positions, targeting certainly the retest of the prior lows, but ultimately looking for a move down into this 9470 area. The euro experienced some, uh, some late losses on Friday in the wake of the uh, European, European Commission's recovery fund meeting that concluded really in no accord, but some consensus on certain parts of the proposal and crucially perhaps no critique of the idea about mixing grants with loans. Uh, this week, the European data calendar will focus on the flash June PMIs and the German EFO. Look for further modest improvement in the EFO expectations index, but it will take some time to return to levels seen at the start of the year. Any manufacturing PMIs above the 50 level, however, would be great progress and could certainly help the euro. Given the big take-up in the ECB's Teltro 3, uh, we could see peripheral debt spreads, uh, particularly at the short end of the curve, continue to be contained. From a technical perspective, the euro dollar is set now to test its equality objective at this 111.40 to 111.50 area. If at the beginning of the week buyers step in and take advantage of the pullback, then I'd be looking for key reversal patterns to set long positions uh, ultimately targeting a retest of the year-to-date highs at the 114.90 area. However, if buyers fail to step in early in the week, then I'm looking for a deeper corrective pullback to retest the uh, area of the 110.20 to 110. Again, watching for bullish reversal patterns if we do trade down to this area, as this will, uh, this will provide a setup on the long side, certainly to see us look for a retest of the 113 handle in the interim. Despite the Bank of England's uh, delivering a tapered version of QE extension, i.e. the pace of asset purchases set to decline in the remainder of the year, sterling failed to benefit as the market remains focused on the odds of negative rates. 
While not discussed at the BOE meeting, it was not ruled out by the governor during the press conference. This is important for Sterling's prospects as the stalling of the UK-EU trade negotiations suggests that the market will likely take a glass half empty approach and keep Sterling risk premium in place, both from the economic side as well as the possibility of negative rates. On the data front this week, uh, UK June PMIs released on Tuesday should continue their gradual recovery after the COVID-19 induced slump. Despite the increase, all forward looking indicators should remain in contractionary territory. Given the volatility of PMI numbers, don't rule out uh, an upside surprise this, uh, this week, but this is unlikely to have a long-lasting effect. No, no key negotiations are scheduled on the trade front. Um, Sterling weakened into the close. We're sitting, as with a bunch of these pairs at the moment, at the equality objective at the 123.20. Again, if buyers step in early in the week and a key reversal Monday, Tuesday, could look to set long positions from this area, certainly targeting a retest of 126 and the descending trend line uh, now coming in at 127.58. However, if uh, buyers don't step in early in the week, then I'm looking for a move down to test support at the 121 area before we might see a recovery. With the reflation trade on hold, at least until investors feel more confident about second wave COVID risks, uh, the dollar yen has sunk back into range. One month realized an implied volatility is just above 6% compared to levels above 10% in early April. As such, the dollar yen's daily correlation with the S&P 500 is not particularly high right now, suggesting the JPY story remains uh, in the crosses. In the week ahead, uh, markets will be watching Japanese foreign bond buying. After a very quiet few months, Japanese purchases of foreign bonds have picked up over the last couple of weeks. This may owe more to the greater confidence in the foreign debt story rather than strategic buying of foreign bonds when the dollar yen approaches that 105 handle. But a consistent pickup in purchases will start to attract greater market attention. From a technical perspective, dollar yen is sitting just above the 105 uh, 650 area, I've been looking for a move down to ultimately to retest the 106 uh, recent cycle lows en route to the ultimate objective of this uh, equality target at the 104.30 before we could see a more material recovery in the dollar yen. Calendar for next week does, doesn't show any key releases for Australia, uh, with some attention though will be given to remarks by the Reserve Bank of Australia, uh, Governor Philip Lowe on Monday. The two hot topics for the RBA now are, one, the tapering plans, and two, whether the strong Aussie dollar is becoming a factor in monetary policy decisions. Next RBA meeting will be on the 7th of July. China-related sentiment has started to creep back in as the main driver for the Aussie dollar, and this should continue to be the case, despite some encouraging signals that the second wave in Beijing may have passed its peak, news of transport disruptions following some new restrictions may hit appetite on the China-sensitive currencies, which are uh, specifically the Australian dollar. Um, from a technical perspective, we close on Friday. I'm looking now for the Australian dollar to, te to test the equality objective at the 66.80 area certainly against um, Friday's highs at the 69 handle. So when we get down to this uh, 66.80, I'm looking for bullish reversal patterns, to set long positions, ultimately looking for a test of the 71 handle. If we fail to find support at the 66.80, look for a deeper correction to the 65 handle before we attempt to set another base. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for a week commencing the 22nd of June.